Good morning, kind people of the internet. Today I'd like to take a look at a few video clips from interviews and one masterclass with the saxophonist Mark Turner. Um, so each of these videos are available on YouTube in their entirety, and I've put the links of the full videos down in the description below it if you want to take a look at the entire thing. But I thought it might be helpful to sort of break them up into different categories to make the knowledge a little bit more digestible. So we have eight different categories here, which are meditation, criticism, practicing, comfort zone, saxophone sound, memory, playing in different keys, and transcription. And I've sort of taken out at least the parts that I found most valuable for myself um, and just sort of organized them in that way. Meditation practice in general, at least for me, it um, kind of helps to put um, all life matters in perspective, you know? Um, so I definitely find the older you get, at least the older I get, the more crazy you can get. <laughs> you know? Um, Especially if you don't practice. Definitely. <laughs> Even that needs to be, you know, uh, looked at in a rational way, or at least, you know, why is it that you feel, or I feel, does need to practice? There might be reasons that are uh, not helpful to my mental state, you know, wanting to practice. Maybe deficiencies in other aspects of my life. So I need to take a look at them, you know. Uh, and that doesn't mean I can't go ahead and practice, but, but anyway, it just helps to put things in perspective, calm the mind, in particular, make, it helps to make you mindful. It definitely helps you to pay attention to what you're doing while you're there and not be, in a sense, daydreaming, wondering, thinking, desiring, uh, being upset with the past or the future. And it definitely helps in terms of music, at least for me, um, one, in your practice time, it helps to be just pay attention and do what you're doing at any pace that you need to do it. And then when you're playing, you're playing, not thinking that this was terrible, that was great, I should be doing this, I shouldn't be doing that. Just play and nothing else. Self-criticism, in my view, at least for myself, must be useful. In other words, you don't want it to be uh, skillful. It should be to the extent that um, it produces a desired result. You don't want to do it just to be doing it. Say, I'm terrible, I suck, and all that stuff. Okay, I say the same thing to myself. Yes, I've got a lot to work on, I'm sad and stuff, but only to make it useful so that I produce something in the end. If it doesn't produce something in the end, why do it? So that's usually what I do. I do all the criticism in the reflective time. Reflective time meanings when you're not playing. You know, So when you're practicing, walking down the street, by yourself, thinking about what you need to do, that's all then. When I play, when you play, no criticism. You don't want any of that. Open, uh, non-critical mind. Just do, right? No reflection, do, get it done. The first thing I usually do is I practice um, a warm-up routine, which I, I do anyway, but if I have limited time, that's the first thing I do. Let's say, for example, you got a half hour or 45 minutes. I instantly go to that, so I start with the metronome at 30. If you have a metronome that goes slower, that's great. I usually start at 30 with um, playing uh, eighth notes at 30, sometimes slower. I might do quarter notes if I'm really feeling uh, rough, but I'll start there. Uh, and I usually do at least four, um, uh, four scale exercises. Um, and I, I do all four at that speed, and then I, slowly, I, I speed up from there. So then I'll do uh, basically uh, about eighth notes and eighth note triplets then uh, 16 notes, 16 note triplets, and then 30 second notes. Uh, and then at that point, I stay at 30 second notes at 30 and then gradually move on up faster. Usually to be specific, I usually move up faster uh, about uh, three metronome markings. So 30, 33, 36, so on and so forth. Uh, and my goal is to get up to 50 with 30 second notes with those four zangs. Now, usually I don't make it with all of them, but Usually, at least, my goal is at least make it with two of them, but I can play at 50, which is very fast. I don't get to spend as much time as I used to before, uh, before my wife and I had children, but uh, any time, chance I get, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes there, an hour there, it usually adds up. But uh, it's just a need of discovery for me. I'm sure Chris feels the same way. For music to be satisfying, I'm sure he feels... And I feel you need to be on the horn to be able to, you know, 
have an in intimate connection with it so you can speak on it. If you don't get enough time on it, then you, you lose it, you know? It's not just thinking about it, it's, it's all the above. And you get on the horn, you, it's so satisfying. Even just to, just to play long tones, you know? It just feels fantastic, I love it, you know? Some things that I figured out uh, for myself is number one, when you're on the bandstand play, make sure you do something that you know you cannot do. Go for that immediately first, all right? Um, I do that all the time, I just go for it. So basically you wanna get yourself in a position that, that you have to get yourself out of. You will definitely not play some stuff that, uh, that you're usually used to doing. The other thing is try playing where you must listen. In other words, concentrate on somebody else in the band. Let's say, I usually compartmentalize. So let's say listen to the guitar player or the piano player or the bass player or the drummer. Or if you're one of those instruments, listen to the saxophone player or the trumpet player. Uh, and when you're playing a solo, uh, make sure that you, you wait and take, so just don't, don't even play yet. First you start, you wait and take, you cannot play anything unless you get some information from somebody else. Take that idea and develop it, whatever it is. It could be melodic, harmonic, or rhythmic, all right? Be specific. Uh, take it and play it, work on it. In other words, develop it until it dissipates. When it dissipates, don't play any more shit. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, wait until you get some more information from someone else, then do it again. All right, but always be willing to uh, not have to fill up space. Wait until you have some valid uh, information or content and then develop and then wait till you get something from someone else. Not from yourself, it must be from someone else. You are obviously the overtone series, um, but I think the important thing about it is not just doing it, but it's what you do. Basically, Playing it very slowly, and then when you get to the altissimo area, basically from maybe once you're once you're finally in the palm keys, you know, you can do it everywhere actually. But so once you're here and you're going up, there I usually just play between two partials really slowly. So. You're not used to it, you're still going to get tired. You're going to have to push in and you won't be able to, you won't be able to 
to keep your engine engine because you're going to, your reserves are going to have to go get small again and it will be sharp. So that's why I, we're going to do it very slowly. And then when you do that, then your altissimo and your power keys get much wider. The main thing I think for memorizing is, is just do everything by ear. You know, just listen to recordings that you like and learn the tunes off the record. Don't sit down and read something and try to learn it by reading it. I mean, if you absolutely have to, that's fine, but the best thing is just to have it in your ears. If you have it in your ears, then you can memorize it. You remember it if you can at least remember what the chords are like. And you can remember the melody. You can then, even if you haven't played it for a while, somebody plays a melody, okay, great, then you, you have it in a few hours. You know? If you don't have it in your ears, then, at least for myself, it, it just doesn't happen. Even though I try to memorize things from, from reading, um, and even like, you know, if I'm trying to memorize somebody has some, some originals and I'm trying to memorize them, I can't memorize them to the play. We have to play them and then I have my ears, then I have to memorize them. If I'm just trying to do it, just playing it, it never happens. And it takes way longer. So, my, my only thing about it is that if you can remember basically the, the melody and the figured bass, then you're cool. Basically, just the bass notes and the melody, especially the standards. If you have that, it's pretty much everything. Kind of gives you the harmony already. You don't really even need to fill it in. I mean, you can, but you, you know, that kind of gives you everything you need. So that's kind of the way I think about it. Just pick up the horn and just... Sometimes I pick up the horn and I just start. Whatever note I'm on, I just start playing. Don't even think about what the key is. Just like when you sing it, you just sing. A lot of times when you sing it, you sing the tune of the, the, the chord of the rock key. Just do it. You know, do it on the horn. You know, whatever it is. Like, you know, anything... I mean, you know, I don't know, any tune, you know, so on and so forth, you know. Um, you can start anywhere you want, you can just start playing on the keys. I would, I would do it, you know, at least a few times a week, if not every day. Just play some tune, you know, on another key, any key. So, I find that helps. As soon as you, have, as soon as you do more of something, then you tend to memorize it, you know. So, that's my thing. I think that I, I enjoy the process of learning, and I, that alone is interesting to me, even, even more than the, the, as much or more than the, the end product. So once you get there, you've done it, and then, all right, then what's next, you know, in a way. So uh, part of it was just that. I was just so curious about how come, I guess, the, I, maybe put it this way shortly, is that the... You know, you find something that you really enjoy, you love it. For example, at one point I really liked Michael Brecker, John Coltrane, Warren Marsh, a bunch of other musicians. And a lot of it is just figuring out why is it that I like this person? What is it that I enjoy about them? What's the connection between uh, myself and this musician? And uh, one way to do it, partially, is to actually figure out what did they actually play? and feel what it feels like to play like them. And so you really get a taste of taking the, the master taking you by the hand and saying, this is how you play music. Um, and if you do enough of them, you get more of a taste of it, really. And um, so for me, a lot of it is just that, just trying to figure out how to play music, figure out what's my connection with this person, what am I what do I want from them? What do they have to, to give me? And uh, feeling it physically in your hands, writing it down, contemplating it, trying to assimilate it into yourself so that it feels natural. Um, that process is very, I found very satisfying. I was trying to figure out how to improvise, you know. Okay, you have some vocabulary and language, what are you going to do with it? So I was trying to figure out, you know, who... Uh, what musicians felt like they were basically using what they had and and uh, kind of flying on the seat of their pants, trying to make things happen without actually falling over, you know, maybe like riding on the crest of the wave or whatever it is, you know. So War Marsh was one of those, and I was attracted to him also because he did it without a whole lot of drama, you know. It's basically content. And I was interested in how was he, how was he able to... Uh, use content, placement, sound, and content meaning melodies, the way he plays the harmony, where he places the notes, how he, how he plays with the rhythm section, 
to create a sense of um, the, create the sense that he's he's uh, always on the edge. You know, where you to me, uh, listening to him, I feel my hair is standing on end because it sounds like he's always almost about to fall over, but it never quite happens. So I wanted to know what that was, and so that's the main thing, you know, about how he processes information, you know, and how he's able to, he almost, it's very, he almost never repeats himself. If you transcribe enough souls, you'll see. Everyone has something that they do, certain language that they have, uh, and some musicians you can find more repetition in their language. This is not a bad thing, I think that's a good thing, but with him, very, very little. So I was looking for that. How is he able to take language, have it still sound familiar, and not repeat himself and still keep it interesting, rational, um, forward-moving, and so on and so forth. 